funny version of the intro. Hello, welcome back to my Minecraft. Okay, okay, that was just weird. So guys, hi! Today we are going to finish Snowball Chapter 7 to the end. No, I am not going to finish this. Hello guys, welcome back to... <laughs> okay guys, let's just get started in with this. And Troxy is joined with us! Yay! Also, Pamela too! Yay! <laughs> and my pillows and my... Basically, yeah. Yay! <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm going to scoot the iPad over here so I can lay down on my pillow. Chapter 7. Ch chapter... Chapter 7. The Ascenta. How are you? You must be really busy right now with Christmas coming so soon. My name is Charles Pearson, and I guess you already know that. I have done my best to be very good this year. I haven't been perfect, I know. Sometimes I joke around too much in class for one thing, but I'm trying. One of I have been really good at, at is taking care of dogs. Even my mom says I did great did a great job when we fostered Goldie. And I've been take, taking good care of Snowball, too, to me. This proves that I am ready to have my, a dog of my own. Charles knew that it was really up to his parents whether or not he, uh, he got to keep Snowball. But he figured it couldn't hurt to put in a word with Santa as well. He had one last letter to write. Why write before Christmas vacation started? Why not make it a letter to send Santa? Charles had not quite finished his letter when the last bell rang, so he carefully put it into his writing folder. Then he jumped up and grabbed his jacket and backpack. Hooray! It was time to go home and see Snowball. Hooray! The puppy was happy when he saw Charles <clears throat> come home. This had been the most boring day ever, but he liked this boy. Now that the boy was home, he would get to play. Mom was really busy. She came downstairs to say hello to Charles, but then she had to get right back to work in her upstairs office. Remember, 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 she told Charles, I am, I'm working on an article, Dad, and Lizzie and the Bean are off doing something, <clears throat> some Christmas shopping. So you're in charge of Snowball this afternoon. Snowball looked up when he heard his name and cocked his head to one side. Charles bent down to give him a hug. He looked so cute when he did that. I know, Charles said. That means you have to make sure he gets some exercise. Said she said, maybe. You could play in the backyard. He needs to burn off some energy. Some of that energy. Charles nodded. Okay, he said. And keep an eye on him all the time, Mom reminded him. I know he doesn't mean to get into trouble, but it seems as if every time I turned my back this week, he was into something. He chewed on one of the bean's favorite dolls. He dragged the pillow off the couch and all over the house. And he pulled half a roll of toilet paper into the kitchen. Charles hid his face 
in a snowball's fur so Mom couldn't see his smile. He thought Snowball was pretty creative when it came to be misbehaving. You know, said Mom, I'm afraid that if we don't find a home for Snowball soon, we have to give him to the animal shelter. It might be easier to let them find a home. He's a bit more than a family with three young children can hand children can handle. We really need he really needs a home where he will have constant attention. Charles stopped smiling and sounded serious. Snowball squirmed out of Charles' arms, then turned and gave him a quick lick on the nose before he charged off the living room toward the living room before stick before stick with him. Mom sighed in fact go up check that door to the den is closed. I brought all the, the Christmas decorations and wrapping paper down from the attic and it's all in there. I don't want him to get into it. it. <clears throat> don't worry, Mom, Charles said as he headed off after a snowball. I won't let him out of my sight. Afternoon, Charles and Sammy played with Snowball, Goldie, and Rufus for a long time in the backyard where snow had fallen. So the dogs did not get muddy this time. In fact, there was enough snow to make snowballs and throw them for the dogs to fetch. All three dogs loved that game, but they were sometimes confused when the ball they were chasing seemed to disappear into a pile of snow. When a snowball flew into a snowbank, Snowball would chase after it and then burrow deeper and deeper into the snow little with between his little paws and he had dug. When Sammy and his dogs went home, Charles and Snowball went inside to dry off and have kitchen and have another snack. Then Charles sat down at the kitchen table to make his Christmas list while Snowball curled up in a ball on the rag rug near the back door. Dad, Mom, Lizzie, Bean, Snowball, Goaty, Rufus, Sammy, Graham, Grandma. That was a lot of people. Charles knew that what he wanted to get his dad a keychain shaped like a fish since his dad liked fishing, and he had some pretty good ideas about dog toys. But that about pretty good ideas about dog toys. But what about everyone else? Presents were expensive. Charles wondered how much money he had saved up. He glanced over at Snowball. He had saved up. He had saved, <clears throat> the puppy was fast asleep. One of his legs were twitching a little, and Charles wondered if he was dreaming about running after Goldie. Charles didn't want to wake up Snowball up, so he tiptoed out of the room and ran upstairs to get his red socks bank. He wanted to empty it out and counted his money. It turned out there was a lot. He'd forgotten about the $10 bill Grandma had given him for his birthday. That plus a whole bunch of quarters. And another change turned out to be to equal almost $23. Charles sat on his bed looking at the piles of change. Maybe he could afford two dog toys. For Snowball. Snowball! Suddenly, Charles realized that he had left the puppy alone. He shoved all the money back into his bank and ran downstairs, hoping he would not find Snowball still curled up on the luck. No such luck. Chapter 8. Charles dashed into the room. 
looking for the puppy. Snowball wasn't in the living room. He wasn't in the dining room. Then Charles heard a noise from the den. Smacked his head. Oh no, he groaned. He'd forgotten to check to make sure the door was closed. And guess what? It wasn't. Not all the way. With his heart thumping. Charles pushed the door open. The puppy looked up at the boy. Why did he seem so upset? Snowball had never had so much fun in his life. He liked this room. There were so much many fun things to dig into, chew, and tear up. What could be more fun? Snowball liked a Christmas tree that had gone through a blender. He had tinsel hanging off his ears, ribbons draped over his back, and a branch of plastic holly was stuck to his stubby little tail, which was wagging madly as he looked up at Charles. Oh, Snowball, Charles said. He couldn't help laughing at how cute the puppy looked, but then he got serious. The den was a mess, and it wasn't really Snowball's fault. He was only a puppy, and he didn't know any better. Charles knew he never should have left Snowball alone. He scooped the little dog into his arms. You're in trouble now, he said. I'm in trouble now. Now was he ever going to clean on all of the stuff before dinner time. Charles sighed and got to work. Later that night, after dinner, Charles was looking at Lizzie's dog of the duty book. It was cool to read about all the things, all the things dogs could be trained to do. Tracking lots of people doing police work, rescuing avalanche victims, and of course, guiding blind people. There were even companion dogs who were trained to help disabled people with things like opening doors or picking up dropped keys. You could learn how to do those things, Charles said, Snowball. He snuggled his nose down into Snowball's fur. You could come become become you could be a companion dog then charles thought about mrs peabody she was not disabled but she certainly needed a friend what well, wasn't that about a companion really was a friend and snowball needed a friend too he needed a friend who could give him lots of attention take him for long walks and train him to do tricks and maybe even teach him to be the therapy dog. Charles, Charles knew his family was not a perfect fit for Snowball. Snowball, they were too busy to watch him all the time. But maybe Snowball and Mrs. Peabody were perfect fit. A per, were a perfect fit. The next day at school, Charles tore up the letter to Santa and started all over again with a new letter to the people in charge at the meadows my name is charles peterson and my family is fostering a puppy named snowball he is a west highland white terrier and he is very smart and cute and small he has very good manners for a puppy and he is learning very fast there is a lady who lives there named mrs peabody she is my grand buddy. I think she is lonely. She misses her dog. He was too big to live with her. But what about Snowball? He's just a little dog. He would be a perfect friend for Mrs. Peabody. For Mrs. Peabody. And everybody else there would like him too. Why aren't dogs allowed at the meadows? I think that stinks. And you should change the rules.
then Mrs. Peabody, then Miss Peabody could adopt Snowball and and I and I could visit him all the time. She would be happy and she would be happy. I was not supposed to read that. Oops. <laughs> You're sincerely Charles Peterson. Charles finished his letter. Just in time. Okay, everybody, Mr. Peterson said, just as Charles was signing his name, time to clean up and get ready for our trip to the meadows. Charles folded up the letter and put it in his pocket. It was done, but he wasn't ready to send it yet. He wasn't completely ready to give up on the idea of keeping Snowball. And anyway, how could he be sure that Mrs. Peabody, Mrs. Peabody would really want to adopt a puppy? Charles had such a fun time with Miss Peabody that day that he had forgot all about the letter. They talked about all the things Snowball was learning to do. Charles told Miss Peabody about giving Snowball a bath, which made her laugh so much that her face turned bright red. He also told her that about watching the therapy dog test, and they both agreed that Snowball would make a great therapy dog someday. The only thing they didn't talk about was Charles' litter. He decided to keep that a secret for now. Charles knew Mrs. Peabody liked dogs. He knew she liked Westies. But it was important to know whether or not she re would really want to have Snowball for keeps. And there was only one way to find out. Chapter 9. Today's the day, Charles whispered into the phone. It was Saturday morning. I'll be right over, Sammy whispered back into the back. Whispered back. The boys had been planning for days, and now it was time to put their plan into action. Snowball needed a walk. A walk. Mrs. Peabody needed a friend. And Charles wanted to make sure that Mrs. Peabody and Snowball would get along. So, why not walk Snowball over to the meadows and surprise and the meadows for a surprise visit? It seems like a good plan as long as nobody found out that is and nobody would. Charles and Sammy had checked out the location of Mrs. Peabody apartment and they were pretty sure they could sneak Snowball in without a problem. Just then, Mom walked into the kitchen with the bean trailing behind her. He was wearing his favorite sweater, the red one with a black lab knitted into, into the front Snowball. Still, very white, fluffy followed the bean snuffing up the crumbs from the beans graham cracker. The puppy had already learned that the bean often dropped at least part of whatever he was eating. Who were you talking to? Mom asked as she opened the fridge. Nobody, Charles said quickly. I mean, just Sammy. And what are you two up to today? She asked. As she poured the bean a cup of juice, Charles looked down at his cereal bowl. Nothing, he mumbled. I mean, we're just going to, to hang out. He wasn't ready to tell Mom the truth about his plan. The meadows was a short talk from school, but a longer walk from home, or at least it seemed longer to Charles and Sammy Snowball. Charles and Sammy, Snowball was not used to walking on a leash. He pulled and tugged, checking out every single smell along the way. Along the way. And he sniffed each one for a really long time, bracing his legs 
and Charles tugged a little on his leash. Charles tried to be patient, but finally he'd had enough. Come on, buddy, he pleaded. When they had stopped for a twentieth time, he bent down and picked up the little dog, tucking him inside his jacket. Snowball struggled a little time at first, then, then relaxed in the warmth of Charles' arms. Okay, Charles said as they neared the row of evergreen that knew grew between the meadows and the road. Anybody around? Sammy snuck a peek around a tree. There's a guy shoveling his patio, he reported, but he's looking the other way. Nobody else is in straight. Charles took a deep breath. He and Sammy took, looked at each other. Let's go for it, said Charles, holding tight to Snowball. He dashed across the snow-covered lawn and to the sliding grass doors of Mrs. Peabody's apartment. I sure hope she's here, he said as he tapped on the glass. The door slid open. Why, Charles, said Miss Peabody's, looking surprised. How nice to see you. This is Sammy, Charles said. Then he unzipped his jacket a little, and this, he said, is Snowball. Oh, my gracious, said Miss Peabody, putting her hand over her mouth. Oh, the little darling. She leaned out the door and looked both ways. Come in, she whispered. A short visit won't hurt. Once they were inside, Charles unzipped his jacket and let Snowball out. The little pup ran right over to Miss Peabody. <clears throat> he had knelt down with her arms open. She scooped him up and gave him a big hug. Oh, aren't you sweet? She said, nuzzling her nose into the fluffy white fur. Snowball licked her nose. Then he licked her ears and her cheek for good measure. The puppy knew this lady liked him. He could tell he liked her too. She knew just how to hold him so he didn't feel all squirmy. She liked he had to get down right away. He wondered if she had any good treats. He licked her nose again. He likes you, Charles said, laughing. I can tell by the way he licks licking you on your nose. M my snowball used to do that t too, said Miss Peabody. Said, she said, she looked happy and sad at the same time. She put Snowball on the up, on the floor, and he took off, roaming around the apartment to check every thing out. When he was done, he came back, sat down in front of Miss Peabody, and let out a few little barks. Shh, said Miss Peabody, putting her finger over his, her lips. You're not supposed to be in here, remember? Charles could tell that Miss Peabody knew exactly how to deal with Snowball per per personality. Snowball cocked his head and looked at her as if he understood. But it was too late. A few months later, there was a knock on the door. Hello, called a woman, pushing open the door. Mrs. Peabody could stop her. Did, did I hear a dog in here? He spotted Snowball. Oh, look, she cried. Isn't he adorable? Mrs. Peabody shrugged at the boy, smiling. This is my next door neighbor, Mr. T Mrs. Tucker, she said. And this is Charles and Sammy and Snowball. Charles held his breath. Was Mrs. Tuck Miss Tucker going to tell on them? Snowball cried, Mrs. Tucker. Miss Tucker. Come here, darling, she laughed. And Snowball came trotting over with his stubby little tail stuck straight up in the air. 
Then she started talking, baby talk to him. Who's the little boy? She asked as she patted him, his head. Who's the sweetest? Who's the sweetest little puppy? Charles and Sammy looked at each other. The baby talk was silly, but they could put up with it as long as Miss Tucker didn't turn them in for sneaking a dog into the meadows. Mrs. Peabody and Mrs. Tucker sat down on the couch with Snowball between them and started talking about dogs. They remember Snowball just sat there soaking up all the attention. Hello! A man stuck his head through the window, which Miss Tucker had left part way open. I could have sworn I heard barking. He stopped when he saw Snowball. Hey there, he said, smiling. Now that's a fine pup. He came over to get a closer look. Then he called out the door. Hey, Evelyn, come see what's in here. Before long, there was six residents of the meadows surrounding Snowball. Look at him, Charles whispered at to Sammy. He's a celebrity, and he loves it. It was true. The puppy seemed totally happy, being handed around from person to person, licking everyone no every licking everyone knows he could reach charles remembered that the rarity dog test and thought how easily charles could pass it he knew just how to make everyone happy mrs peabody looked over at the boys her cheeks were pink and she was smiling broadly. Just then, there was another knock on the door. Miss Peabody said a woman in a white uniform stepping in the room. It's hard to bother you, but it's time for... Hide him, whispered Miss... Hide him, whispered Miss Tucker, shoving Snowball toward the woman named Evelyn. Chapter 10. When they left Charles... Let Sammy zip Snowball into his jacket. He had he had an errand to do on the way out of the meadows at the rest the recitation desk. He dropped off the letter he written now he knew it was the right thing to do. Snowball and Miss Peabody belonged together. Well, that was a close call, Sammy said as he and Charles headed home with Snowball, but Evelyn really came through. Charles agreed. I don't think that nurse suspected a thing. He looked down at Snowball, who was trotting happily beside him. I have a feeling Miss Peabody is starting to make friends at the Meadows. What do you think, Snowball? I don't know if I said chapter 10, but we are on chapter 10. Snowball cocked his head and wagged his tail. His tail, the puppy had enjoyed, had enjoyed, had enjoyed meeting new friends. New friends. Those people seemed to understand that he should be the center of attention at all times. He liked that. He liked it a lot. Where have you been, Lizzie demanded when Charles got home just in time for dinner. Out for a walk, Charles replied in, in, innocently. It was the truth. After all, he was tempted to tell Lizzie what a superstar snowball had been at the meadows. But it seemed best to keep that visit a secret for now. How was Christmas shopping? Did you get me something good? He asked. Guess you will have to wait and see, Lizzie said. Charles loved Christmas, but sometimes it drove him crazy wondering what presents he was going to get. He'd been asking for a dog every year. 
since he could remember, but he'd never gotten one. Still, his parents and Santa usually came through with great presents that Charles wasn't too disappointed. They all sat down at the table for dinner. Anne's mom had just started serving the macaroni and cheese when the phone rang. Hello, Dad asked. He didn't like it when people called at dinner time. Well, yes, he's here. Just a minute. He put a hand over the phone and motioned to, to Charles. It's for you, he said. A Mr. Mrs. Collins, who works at the Meadows, Dad looked curious. Charles gulped. This, had someone found out about Snowball's visit? He took the phone. His dad handed him and cleared his throat. Hello. Hello? He asked. This is Charles. He walked into the living room so he could talk privately in case he was in big trouble. A few minutes later, he came back into the kitchen, hung up the phone, and burst out with a cheer. Yes, he cried. What is it? Asked his mother. Something about your grand buddy? Sort of, Charles said. It's about the snowball, too. I think I've found him a home. He explains everything. It turns out that small dogs were allowed at the meadows as long as they were well behaved. Mrs. Collins wanted to come over and meet Snowball. She wanted to make sure he was a kind of dog that she wanted to make sure he was a kind of dog that would fit in the meadows. So she'll be here in a half an hour. Charles finished. What, tonight? His mother asked. Charles nodded. I want to give Snowball to Mrs. Peabody for Christmas. There's no time to waste. His mother threw up her hands. Okay, everybody, let's finish our dinner quickly. And then you can all help tidy up a bit. The next 20 minutes went by in a blur. Activity Charles had never eaten dinner so quickly. Then he helped clear the table, took Snowball out for a bathroom break, and held the bean round up the toys and books that were scattered all over the living room. Meanwhile, Mom and Dad had and Lizzie were running around too. When the doorbell rang, Mom smiled at Charles and gave him a high five. Good job! She said, Miss Collins turned out to be a really friendly woman who didn't even blink when the bean barked at her. She just patted his head and said, nice doggy. After they had talked for a while, Mrs. Collins finally said, so where's this puppy I've heard about? Dad looked at Mom. Mom looked at Charles. Charles looked at Lizzie. They all looked at the bean. The bean barked again and laughed his googly laugh. He was no help. Where is he, Mom asked. I took him out after we ate, Charles said, but then we were all running around. Oh, no, Lizzie gasped. I just remembered I was tidying up the den and saw him come in. When I went out, I must have closed the door so he wouldn't get into the Christmas wrapping stuff. Only I, I closed him in with it. Charles groaned. He could just picture what that room was going to look by now. Snowball had probably shredded every bit of wrapping paper into a big, wild, colorful piles and dropped ribbons all over the furniture. When Mrs. Collins saw that mess, she was never going to let Mrs. Peabody adopt Snowball. I guess we'd better go find him. Dad said grimly, they all, they all followed him as he led the way to the den and opened the door. Aw, sighed Miss Collins. He looked in. What a darling. 
There were no wild piles of shredded wrapping paper, no ribbons draped from the wall to wall. There was just a fluffy white snowball all curled up in little nest of red tissue paper. He opened one eye and thumped his tail, and he woke to see everyone looking at him. Snowball couldn't understand why everyone was laughing. laughing. What was all the fuss about? He had no idea. What was so funny? He was just trying to take a nap. Charles could hardly wait until Christmas. He and Lizzie worked hard on Snowman's training. The puppy lean learned so fast. Now he could walk on his leash without pulling, shake hands, and fetch his toys from a basket. On Christmas Eve, they gave him another bath so that he was as white and, and as fluffy as he could be. Finally, the big day arrived. Charles and his family arrived at the meadows this time. There was no sneaking snowball walking proudly along, along with them on his leash with a huge bright red bow tied around his neck. Surprise! Charles shouted when Miss Peabody answered the door. Merry Christmas! Do you like your present? He knew she did, even though she was crying. Later, when Charles gave some Snowball one last hug before they left, he thought about how much he had wanted to keep the fluffy little puppy for himself, but he also knew that Snowball had found the best home in the world. Snowball and Miss Peabody were a perfect match. So someday Charles would find his own perfect match. Someday the Pearsons would find the right dog at the right time, but until they were, there would always be puppies who needed homes, and Charles and his family would always be happy to help each puppy find the perfect place. The end, guys. So, guys, we are going to end this day off with a book. And bye.